Do you think when people stop you at airports and you go around the world lecturing, hmm, Jordan Peterson from Fairview, it's hard to believe. Does that happen? Well, I live, I live in a constant state of disbelief. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious about this. Like, I think it's a form of post-traumatic post -traumatic shock in some sense. I mean, my life in the last three years has been just a, a, a continual series of surreal impossibilities. I mean, on the one hand, I've been involved in a political scandal of some sort for, for a good year and a half. It was at least twice a week. And then for the entire three-year period, it's been at least once a week. It's nonstop. And sometimes it's national, and sometimes it's international, but it's continual. And so that's, I'll give you an example. This is a funny little story. My son came over one day about a year and a half ago, and I was having a kind of a rough day because 200 of my colleagues at the university had signed a document trying to get me fired. And then they gave it to the union, and and the union presented it to the administration without even informing me, even though I'm part of the faculty union. And so I said to my son, Julian, um, you know, 200 of my colleagues today just signed a letter saying that I should be fired. And he said, oh, dad, don't, don't worry about that. It was only 200. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, that's where we were at. You know, it was like, oh. That's not, that's, that's, that's a, that was a light day. Was, that was okay, you know? And then, so, so there's that. And, and the fact that it doesn't quit, that's another thing I, I can't understand. It's like, you know, all this blew up around me, around Bill C-16, and I thought, well, I've had my 15 minutes or my, and then it was like, well, I've had my week, and then it was like, well, oh, I must have had my month, and then, it, but none of that happened. It just kept expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding. And, and every day I wake up and I think, well, this is going to come to an end, but it doesn't. It just expands. And, and that just doesn't seem credible in the least. Every time I come to an event like this, or I mean, when I was in Australia, I was speaking to audiences of 5,500 people. And it's like, how in the world can you believe that? It's like, I, you heard what I just said. Who, the, who in their right mind would come and listen to someone who just told you what I told you? You know, it's so dark and it's so demanding. You wouldn't think that people would line up for blocks and s spend their hard-earned money and, and come because it's a, like a marital anniversary. That's what they say. This was our anniversary present to each other. I thank you people. You, you're completely out of your mind. And so, and then I think too, you know, that, that, that the state of disbelief is necessary. And maybe that's an advantage to being older because I'm too old to adapt rapidly. And this isn't the sort of thing that you should adapt to, right? I should be in a constant state of shock disbelief because it keeps my head on straight. I don't know what's going on exactly. I don't know why it's the case that what I'm saying is so necessary, apparently. But it seems to be, and I'm trying to figure out why, but I'm certainly not for a second. I think I take very little for granted. And I, I mean, I think I take even less for granted than you might think. I told you that I don't take it for granted that you can all sit here peacefully, you know? And, and, I, 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 and, and that is how I look at the world, is that if, if, it isn't, if it isn't burning in rack and ruins, then I think it's a bloody miracle. And the fact that things have gone well for me and that I'm still standing, which is also a miracle of sorts, you know? I mean, there were probably 30 different scandalous episodes that had every, that anyone with any sense would have thought would finish me. And they've all backfired. And that's also,
I also don't understand that. It's like, I don't understand that. I get attacked in the New York Times, and my friends call me, who are New York Times readers, and they say, you, 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 you've had it this time, because that was the New York Times, you know? <laughs> You're not gonna recover from that, and I think, well, that's probably true. I mean, I was expecting it to happen all along, and then I wait, and then, you know, everybody clamors at me, and then I don't respond too much to that, and it starts to die away, and then all the supporters come out. And then there's a hundred people who clamor and 10,000 supporters. And you know, here's something I can tell you about my life that's really remarkable. So, you know, if you just read the press, well, you'd have all sorts of ideas about me. I mean, you know, that I'm a bigot in the broadest possible sense. And so that's, you know, racist, sexist, homophobic, ethnocentric, white nationalist, alt-right, Islamophobic, Nazi, Hitler, homophobic. All of those things. Um, and you'd think that there was just nothing but hatred, although I have been treated well by many journalists, but you, you could easily get that sense that like I live in a world where I'm surrounded by hatred and that is absolutely not true. It's so not true that, that, that it's, you know, there are lies and then there are, there are, there are anti-truths. And, and an anti-truth is even worse than a lie. It's like the ultimate form of lie. And that isn't what my life is like at all. What my life is like is that I travel with my wife and wherever we go, and I mean that literally, wherever we go, and we've been to, I don't know how many countries in the last year. It's like, I don't know how many. 30, 40, many countries. If I go down the street, or if I'm in an airport, or if I'm in a cafe, or if I'm in a th movie theater, or if I'm in a mechanic's shop, some person comes up to me every 10 minutes and says, I hope I'm not disturbing you. And they're very, very polite. And they say, um, I've been listening to your lectures or I've been watching your YouTube videos or I read your book and I was in this dreadful place six months ago and then they tell me a little bit about the particulars of that little corner of hell they were ensconced in. And then they say, well, I've been trying to develop a vision for my life or I've been trying to take more responsibility or been trying to be grateful for my job, um, mundane though it may be, or I've decided that I'm going to try to put my family together and make peace, and I've really been trying, and it's really working, and things are way better, and thank you. And so, well, it's, it's overwhelming to have that happen continually, it's very difficult to believe, but it's unbelievably positive. You know, I mean, it's, if you could imagine, if you could ask for what you wanted, eh? you could have anything you wanted, you might think. It would be lovely if I could live my life in a manner so that wherever I went in the world, perfect strangers would come up to me one after the other, and tell me that they're suffering much less, that their families are in better shape, and that their lives are on course because they took, they, they, they took to heart some, something that I was communicating. That's as good as it gets, as far as I can tell. <laughs> I really, I don't want to ask anything else. I think this was so powerful. And if that didn't prove my instinct is right, nothing will. Jordan Peterson, you are a good man.
You are doing a lot of good. I thank God he made you. Thank you. Thank you.